Welcome. One of the biggest challenges when you're mixing your own glazes is to get the right mix between dry materials and water. If it's too watery, there won't be enough material on the pot left and it may fall off when it dries. If there's too little water, it will be too thick a layer and it won't work either. So getting that exactly right is super important. But how do you do that? How do you make sure that I have the right uh, mix and how do you measure it? In this video, I will show you a couple of different ways to do it, but I'm going to focus mostly on specific gravity for many reasons. But one of them is that most potters think it's very difficult, very advanced to do specific gravity. And in fact, I have a very, very easy way that you can do it. So welcome. There are basically three ways that you can measure relationship between water and dry materials in your glaze. If you're a very experienced potter and you know your glaze very well, you may not need any tools. Many potters I know that are working with a few glazes, they know very well. And some of the glazes I work with, in fact, I just dip my finger into the glaze and I can sort of see how the glaze falls off my finger. And for a particular glaze, I know that it feels this way it's good. But of course that, need, that, that can only work if you know your glaze really well. For the rest of us, for the rest of the glazes we don't know so well, we do need some sort of tools. I think, at least here in Denmark and some places, one of the most common tools is this uh, hydrometer. And it works in the way it's typically this glass thing. It works in the way that there's a weight here, some, some lead or some, some metal or something. You put it into a fluid, and then depending on, on how, how the specific gravity or how the viscosity of that glaze is, you will have a readout. And typically for most glazes, it should be somewhere between 40 and 50 on this scale. Now there's a few problems with using this. First of all, it's glass. They break very easily. They're quite expensive, or at least cost some money. Fun, and they break and you get glass everywhere and it's just a mess. Well, that's one problem. The other problem is that, as you see, they're quite long and the longer they are, I mean, if you can get very small ones, but they're not very accurate. This size is good, but in order to get down to, to 40 or 50, as you can see here, you need quite a lot of glaze. So if you're mixing a small bucket of glaze, you don't have enough. Then, of course, you can put it into a, to a longer tube and, and measure it there, but that's still sort of messy, especially then you have to pull it back, have to mix more water in, test it again, or whatever you need to do. So it's not easy to work with. The other problem is that it does, to some degree, measure specific gravity. So the relationship between dry and, water, uh, and, and, and wet materials. But it's also under influence by viscosity. So, so if it's very jelly, uh, the glaze, this may not actually read out completely correct. I know there's some discussions whether or not it does. And I'm not saying you cannot use hydrometers because that would be a lie because lots of products are using hydrometers to measure the glazes and it works out great for them. So if this is the tool you want to use, please go ahead and do it. Uh, most pottery stores will have them and um, maybe you even have one in the workshop you're in. Just be aware of these limitations I talked about. My preferred method of measuring um, glaze is with specific gravity. Specific gravity is a more scientifically accurate way of measuring the relationship between dry and wet materials. And that is important because if there's too much water, not enough dry material, which is essentially the glaze that is going to melt out after the water uh, evaporate, then it won't have enough glaze on the pot. And if it's too little water in it, then you will typically get too much glaze on the pot. And it could crawl, it could run, or whatever glaze does when there's too much of it. So you want the right uh, relationship between dry and wet materials. That's also what we call specific gravity. There are tools, advanced tools that you can use uh, to measure specific gravity, but you don't need that. 
The only two things you need is a tube. I got this. It's a tube that I, I bought a few of them there. I think they, they use them in brewing beer or something for testing. I don't know. I don't brew. I don't like beer. So, but I bought them and they're very, very cheap. So you need a tube of some kind. I used to have glass tubes. They were very nice. And I broke them all. <laughs> this one is plastic. It will probably last a lifetime. And you need a scale. I just use this uh, cheap office scale. That's all you need. Now you can measure specific gravity. Before you can start using uh, these tools, you need to calibrate it, so to speak. So what I mean by that is that water, pure water, have a specific gravity of one. So we use pure water as a way to, um, to calibrate our tool. I already calibrated this, but basically what you do is you set your scale, you reset it so it's zero grams, or whatever uh, scale you're using, and uh, then you add the water up until 100 grams. This is 100 grams of water. So now I can add this, um, this mark. I just use the tape. That's an easy way to do it. You can use whatever, a, 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 a pin or something, whatever you like, whatever works for you. So this is your calibration. So now you know if you fill up this to the same amount, if it weighs more than 100 grams, then it have a higher specific gravity. If it weighs less than 100 grams, it's lighter than water and have a, a lower specific gravity. For glazes, of course, it's always going to be more because you're adding heavy materials to the water. So it's going to be more heavy. The great thing about measuring with specific gravity is that it is not influenced by the viscosity of the glaze. We can talk about viscosity in a second because that's also important. But first, we want the right mix between dry materials and wet materials. So let's go downstairs where I have all my glazes and test this out on a real glaze. The glaze we're going to work on today <clears throat> is called Charcoal Black Matte. Uh, but I made some modification to it. Which is something that is nice about mixing your own glazes. You don't have to use it exactly as it was made. This one, as the name suggests, is sort of a black uh, matte glaze. But I wanted a more gray glaze. So instead of uh, the colorants that I in the original uh, recipe, I used very, very little black and then I used a little bit of cobalt to get a bluish black. However, <laughs> what I didn't anticipate is that uh, because of the tin, uh, when you add a little bit of cobalt and you have the tin, it actually turns out green. That's the wonder of uh, chemistry. But I do like how it turned out. It's a very nice, uh, ideally, um, sort of semi-matte uh, greenish uh, glaze. I originally intended to use them on, um, on plates, and I think, ideally, they turn out really, really nice on these plates. However, over time, they, it, it became a little bit too thick and I had problems like this where it crazes and it's very obvious that the application was too thick. You can see <laughs> it's almost like yogurt <laughs> and it should probably be a little more like uh, a cream or something and so this is way too thick. So today I'm going to try and adjust it. And when I look at the glaze now, it's obviously <laughs> way, way too thick. Uh, so first, I'm going to measure the specific gravity to see what it is. I'm aiming for something like 140, 142. Uh, so not super thick, but still not too light. If you try and dip a test file into this, you can see that the application is very thick. It's actually almost crawling off uh, right now and it takes forever for it to dry. Uh, so yeah, this is too thick. So first, we're going to reset our scale with the measuring tool. Um, so now it reads zero grams. And we're going to pull up the glaze until we hit this um, mark that we put on our scale. Uh, it was a little bit too much. 
it's hard to see now, but I can see it through here and it's spot on. It's 142. So you would assume that it's okay. I said I was aiming for a specific gravity of about 142. I do think I want to add a little bit of water to make it just a little lighter. So maybe 138, 140. You may need to um, clean your tube in between testing because as you see right now, <laughs> I can't see anything on the scale. I'll just do that. I'm just gonna add a little bit like this. Put this back in the bucket. And now it's already feeling a lot better. It still feels a little bit thick. I will, just to make sure that it's probably mixed, I'll just uh, blend it with this. Uh, it's a cheap kitchen blender, but it helps make sure. <laughs> now I dump this into it. Um, that was not intentionally. Um, it'll make sure that, that there's no lumps or you know anything uh, left in the glaze. So, just take this away. It's, it feels much better now. Still a little bit thick, but we'll get back to that in a second. So now we are ready to test it again and always reset your scale before you do any testing. So now it's about 140. So I think I can add just about the same amount as I did first time. Because I think it will be better if we get it down on um, 140, maybe 139. So let's do that. So now we test it again. It's definitely feeling a lot better. Um, <laughs> so now it's uh, 138. So 138 grams, which is a specific gravity of 1.38. But it still feels a little bit thick. And you would naturally assume that um, you didn't need to add more water. The problem is, if you add more water, it will flake off when you apply it to your pot. Because there will be too much water, the shrinkage will make it flake. You've probably seen that sometimes with, um, with glazes, that when it dries, it kind of flakes off and falls off. So it doesn't apply the dry materials right. But it's still thick. So we'll still leave a layer of glaze on my pot that is too thick, I believe, because this needs to be applied pretty thin. So that's the gelling or the viscosity problem that I was talking about before. This glaze is probably what you call fluctuated. It can come because of some of the materials. Sometimes they gel up, uh, bread does that, some other materials. I'm not actually sure why this glaze is doing that. It's a pretty new glaze to me and it's not a mix of materials that I usually use. But there's an easy way to make it thinner without messing with the specific gravity. And that is by using a defluctuation uh, component. You can use Darwin uh, 811 or you can simply use sodium silicate which is very cheap and widely available. Just be careful when you add this, only a few drops can change the viscosity of the glaze dramatically. And also remember, when you let this uh, glaze sit for a month, maybe you don't use it for the next three months and you take it up again, it may need to be defluctuated once again, because these materials tend to um, gel up. 
Again, I'm not 100% sure why. I'm not a chemist. I just know how to fix it. So let's add a little bit of sodium silicate. And when I say a little bit, it's really just a matter of a few drops. I don't know if you see it, but if I put my finger in now, it kind of runs off much, much better than what it did just a couple of moments ago. And to be sure that it's mixed well, I'm going to use my blender. Here. And now you can see how much it changed it. Instead of being like yogurt, <laughs> it's more like a cream, somewhere between milk and cream. Definitely much better. So let's try and see what happens if we dip uh, one of our test tiles in here. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to use these anyway, but um, I don't use test tiles that much. But it's nice for just trying to dip it. So we put it down here. And as you can see, this application, I don't know if you can see it, but the application here is, is much better. It's still applying a little bit on the thin side, but look, it's drying up nicely. It's drying up in a few seconds, as it should, and there's no signs that it's um, flaking off. So I think, all in all, I think this is much, much better. So that's it. It's really that simple. <laughs> as I said in the beginning, it is not that difficult. Of course, the difficult part is to know what uh, specific gravity your glaze needs. If you look up the glaze recipe in glazy.org or in one of the Facebook groups, there's a really good Facebook group uh, for John Britt's uh, glazes, um, mid-fire glazes or high-fire glazes. There are two groups for that. Um, very often people will recommend a specific gravity that may work for you. Um, otherwise, I would say, yeah, anywhere between 135 and 145 is usually good for most glazes. It depends a little bit on how thick a layer it should be. So again, just to recap, um, you need a weight, you need some sort of scale, you need to calibrate the scale with uh, 100 grams of water and then make some sort of mark, and that's your scale. And then you fill up the glaze to the mark and you measure the weight. And if the weight is 140 grams, that means you have a specific gravity of 1.40. It's that simple. And then you can adjust your glaze in this case, it was uh, fluctuated, so we used some defluctuation, um, in this case, uh, sodium silicate. Um, it can also be the opposite, that it's actually too watery, <laughs> or feels too thin, um, then it's defluctuated. In that case, you can use a fluctuation uh, component. Uh, usually, I would use uh, Epsom salt, that is dissolved water. Again, just a few drops will make it thicker, so not so uh, watery. <laughs> the goal is, First of all, to have the right mix between dry and wet materials, that's what we measure with specific gravity, and then also have a viscosity of the glaze that apply the right layer of glaze. It will take some testing, but at least now you have the tools to do it. So I hope this helped, and I hope to see you soon again. And if you like this video, please subscribe and share and comment if you have some comments. Maybe you have some tips for a better way to do this than what I do. I will be posting a new video next Sunday at 5 uh, p.m. Central European time. I'm on a fixed schedule now <laughs> for my videos, so um, please come back and um, I hope to see you again.